and whether they heed or resist, and whether they heed or resist, they shall know that a prophet has been among them. In the gospel, Jesus, the people took offense at Jesus. The people took offense at Jesus. Whether they heed or resist, whether they heed or resist, why do people resist God's message? Why do people resist God's message? Whether they heed or resist their friends in Christ, this is a reflective question. We're going to try to answer from the readings of today. Why do people resist God's message? Whenever God's message is preached, there are two reactions. One, people will heed to the message, or people will reject it, will fight it, will box it. There might be another one that is neutrality, but there is no neutral or neutrality in the sight of God because God said, you're going to be hot or cold. If you are not hot, if you are not cold, you risk vomiting. God will spite you out of his mouth. Revelations chapter 3, verse 6. You're going to be hot or cold. You don't need to stand at the middle. So, it is either you heed or you resist. And we are asking the question, why do people resist God's message? What is resistance? Resistance is synonymous with rejection, not welcoming, not accepting. Resistance means that in my capacity to welcome, I didn't want to welcome. Either I resist, I fight, I don't want to hear about it, I don't want to do it. Why do people resist God's message? One. One, arrogance. Arrogance. What is arrogance? Arrogance is self-display of superiority or self-importance. Display of superiority or self-importance. People who want to please their ego the responsorial psalm, one part of it says, with the contempt of an arrogant. I'm displaying my superiority. I'm displaying my self-importance. I want to please my ego. Therefore, nothing can come between me and my ego. When God is speaking to you or speaking to me, 
I don't know when I hear it. Arrogance. Number two is self pride. It's not pride in the positivity whereby we say the musicians, we are proud of what you have done today. That is pride in positivity. We are talking about self-pride. Self-pride is an exaggerated self-esteem, whereby you and I look down on others. You and I look down on God's message. Pride. You, you, at times, you hear people say, swallow your pride. You're going to swallow your pride. <laughs> pride. Exaggerated self-esteem. Looking down on others. Not accepting in the sense of bringing it to God's message. Number three, familiarity. Familiarity. Personal knowledge of somebody or of a situation in which you don't show the required respect or you treat it with carelessness. Our journey to the gospel, familiarity. Oh, I know him. Oh, he's my friend. Oh, he is son of Mary. We know his family. I know this guy, he grew up in Louisville. <laughs> oh, I know his father. We started the epiphany. Familiarity. Familiarity, we used to say, bris contempt. The gospel summarizes everything. People took offense at Jesus because, ah, oh, we know his mother, oh, we know his family. They didn't want to rest in to God's message. They rejected. They started boxing. That also, the question of familiarity can bring in the agent of evangelization who is talking to you. I know him. The other day we had lunch together. What, what is he saying? <laughs> I know him. In the sense that the maximum respect, in the sense that what you ought to do, you treat with utmost carelessness, and it will prevent you from getting to what God is talking to you and talking to me. Number four, and the last, recall. What we are considering, we are considering as from the offshoot of the readings. There could be many reasons why people reject, resist God's message. Number four is weakness. What is weakness? We are talking about moral weakness. Moral weakness is lack of strength for me to act according to God's principle. Lack of weakness, lack of strength to act according to God's principle. When we say moral weakness, we are saying the commandment of God the principles of God, where I do fall short, where do you not measure? 
Now, here, when God's message is preached, you begin to box it because you're not comfortable with it. The second reading, Paul in his weakness, he cried out, our weakness should be avenue to listen to God's message. Our weaknesses should be avenue to connect to God's message and not to reject it and not to resist it. Paul came to God and said, oh, my weakness. And God said, my grace is sufficient for you because in your weakness, I preferred my will. That area, when God's message is preached, you are not comfortable. That area, when God's message is preached, I am not comfortable. Automatically, ordinarily, the next reaction is to reject it. We are human beings. The next reaction is to reject it. It is natural. Paul teaches us in your weakness, you can come to God because his grace is sufficient to you and to me. One thing that continues to repeat from the first reading even to the gospel is even when people reject, even when people resist God's message, God continues to speak to us. God continues to speak to you and to speak to me. And in the first reading, he said, whether they heed or reject or resist, continue to tell them, thus says the Lord. In the responsorial psalm, oh, that today you will listen to his voice, Harden not your heart. And I recall Paul writing to Timothy says, in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2, says, you have to preach the word, welcome or unwelcome. Even if they reject it or resist the God's message, you continue to preach because in God's message, we find salvation. Why do people resist God's message? Arrogance, self-pride, familiarity, and weakness. 